Hi everybody, welcome. This is the Paper Outpost. Hey, do you ever get these mail envelopes, you know, in the mail? They're used and you're wondering what you can do with them with your junk journals. Well, here's um, one idea that can be used in two different ways. Um, just having some fun trying to use what's in my space and uh, uh, transform it into something fun. Okay, and possibly useful. Uh, okay, so I made this little guy and it's a very simple construct. Um, uh, so basically, this has a big pocket here, and it has a very big pocket here. So you could actually use this uh, to stuff ephemera into. Let's say if you were giving somebody a junk journal and you wanted to give them extra things to play with, you could add this to it. Or you could actually use this for your own junk journal ephemera storage, or digikit cutout storage, or magazine pages, or book pages. You could put book pages and magazine pages back here and put this on your shelf. And uh, it's a nice way to turn something that would be tossed out or tossed into a landfill and make it into something useful. You can decorate these any way you like, but I'll show you the basic way I made it. It's so easy. It's not rocket science. I'm sure it's been done a million times, but um, here we go. Okay, so the first thing I did was noted there is a metal thing here. Now, if you want to just completely do away with the metal thing, the easiest, I, I just recommend this because if you sew this, you don't want to sew through metal. And that's why I'm just kind of putting this little thing out there. So we're just going to cut it off. Yeah. Now you could also remove it. You could uh, tediously pick it out, which is what I did this uh, that time. But this time I'm just going to cut it off because I realized this is much easier. There we're done. Okay. That's over. All right. So now the basic thing of this is which way do you want it to show? And I think I have a lot of what I call visual noise on this side and it's calm on this side. So I think I'm going to use the calm side as my outside. And I'm going to flip this up to whatever degree I want to take it up. I can make just a shorty little pocket, a medium pocket, a big pocket. I'm going to take about halfway up and uh, do it here and make this fold nice and crease like with my bone folder. Where are you, bone folder? In arm's reach. Here you are. And this gives just a nice paper crease. Um, Okay, now this, because it's folded over on the edge here, the way it's made, is already a nice strong edge. And um, this happened to have tape on it, which helps reinforce it. Now you can, we're going to also decorate that, so no worries there if, if you don't have anything on those edge. It, it just makes like one sh thin sheet by itself. Might not be strong enough as little fingers ferret in and out. So we may want to strengthen that area up. So now, um, this is what I did. It's, it's kind of just, um, I just mushed the whole thing. That's what I did. I crunched it because I wanted the wrinkles because I wanted to play with the wrinkles. Yeah, I was wanting to play with the wrinkles. I know, I know. And uh, so wrinkle it. And with the, the strength of 10 kittens. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, this is not mandatory. This is just fun for effect. So if you want to see the original again. It just gives those wrinkles a place for ink to grab if you want to do a design like that. Um, you don't have to do any of that, but it's just kind of a fun look. And uh, now you open it up and then you wrinkle it a different way. So you get different wrinkles. Yeah. And you can do the twist wrinkle. And this also breaks down some of the paper fiber, making it a little bit softer. It has more of a velvety suede type of feel when you do this. Okay. Uh, all righty. There we go. Okay. So this is my top. All right. And I do have that original fold where I was going to do that. So I know that's going to go there, but maybe I want to cover this with something else. And here, what I used was, this was a, um, a signature page, one of my digi kits, but you could use anything and let's use just like something that you might have hanging around if you don't have those. Um, hold on. Let me find something. I just found this book page. It's um, from a big book and um, it has a pretty picture here, but I don't think I'm going to use the picture. I'm going to use the blank side just because I like the paper and I thought that might be fun. So flattening this out, kind of figuring where I need it to sit using the old, I went in about a quarter of an inch from the top, quarter of an inch or so from the side. Then I'm going to use this ruler and there's a little tear there. So I'm going to take it as far as the tear, just again, working with what I have here. I'd have to reposition it a little bit. Okay. And then how far down do I need it? Not, not that far down. Because once this covers, you technically only need it up to this line. So I'm going to put you in there. You don't even need it that tall, but let's just put it in here and see what we get. All right. So we're definitely about there. And then we have plenty, right? We have plenty to play with. We're good. Okay. 
Uh, you could put text or something there, but I thought I'd keep it a little plain because maybe I want to decorate it. You know, you know, I'm just saying. Okay, here we go. So we can, um, you can ink that if you want to. I've just got some, what is this? Vintage photo in distress oxide. I went into my, what is that? String. Um, I went into my big ink drawer and I pulled out a bunch of inks that I don't normally use. So that's, that's how I got these colors. I just pulled out some stuff that I don't normally use. And um, what were they? Um, fired brick peeled paint. Oh, I guess I use that one. Okay. Um, what else was there? There was kitsch flim was there kitsch flamingo? Maybe. I don't remember that one. Don't remember using that one. And broken china. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can get different looks. Maybe it's time to play with different papers, right? Give you a little, little, uh, uh, variety. All right. So flatten that out. Oh, we haven't colored it yet. Let's do that first. Okay. Getting ahead of myself here. Um, okay. So let's just start with brown on this one. Here's a little brown. I was going to, um, all right. Did, I just did that to wet it a little bit because sometimes they get a little dry and I'm just going to kind of run across the ridges. You don't have to do it below here because this is going to fold up. Okay, and you can do it a lot or a little. And I recommend you maybe cover, put something under if you don't want to get your nice table all dirty. Oh, that's kind of cool. It almost looks like a turtle back or kind of a alligator or something like that. Since we have alligators, we see a lot of that around here, you know what I mean? Um, okay, actually I kind of like that. That's kind of neat. Um, there we go. A little more here. Now, obviously, it's not going to stick where the tape is, but we, I think we're going to cover that anyway, so that's okay. Maybe just do a little bit more here, especially around the edges, because the edges are going to show. Okay. Now, let's cover that, because we're good crafters. We always remember to cover our little ink pads, right? Not me. Um, okay, that we have. Very nice. Do I want to bring come in there with something else? Um, let me bring in a little different color. Let's uh, let's look at something here. How about I, I, I find the feeling this is going to be green. I don't know why. But I think my, my pretty orange marmalade went green. No, it's not. It's orange. Okay, well, since it's pumpkin season, let's put a little orange in here. It's going to, if you move it in different directions, it'll pick different areas up. And you can kind of emphasize the corners. And give it a good little rub. And maybe here, just a little bit of something. Okay, and there we are. We're feeling very fall. Any other fall? Maybe the, uh, I have this one called old paper. There, that's what it looks like. Kind of a grayish beige, I would say. Just a little in there. I don't know what that is, but we'll just put it in there for fun. Because we're having fun and we're using up all those inks we forgot about. That's right. Did anybody else go ink crazy? I know I did in the beginning. I bought every color I could find my... And then I realized, oh my gosh, they, they keep cranking out more... I can't... I don't have a drawer big enough anymore to hold all these amazing colors. Okay. I'm going to get that on the right fold line. Oh, there goes my alarm. Yep. Ding, ding, ding. I got to fix that. I don't, you probably can hear it's kind of quiet uh, today for some reason. I don't know. Maybe the AC is on. Uh, okay. So we have uh, this. Yes. Now, you have options at this point, but I say let's go ahead and decorate this little area and uh, put that in there. This is a little firmer of a piece of paper, which is going to maybe be easier to grab onto a bumpy paper. I don't know. I'm making that up in my head. Um, I just think a thinner paper will wrinkle a little bit more. And maybe you want the wrinkle look on that. You could totally wrinkle this paper. That would be cool. Why didn't I do that? Too late. Too late. Okay. So, yeah. Why fight the wrinkle, right? Why not just go with it? Because you can always decorate on top of it. All right. Let's see. Well, this is where we're at, Pam. You're, you're going here now. Okay. Here we go. All right. Now, this, this bring in those power of 10 kittens again and start pushing. Use hand iron hand iron. Okay, down you go, down you go. Okay, you didn't do the edges very well there, sister. You get back in there and do that. Okay. Yeah, you want to get your edges well. Okay. Now, this you can't really sew on unless you deconstructed your entire envelope or it would just sew right through and you would close the, um, you would close your pocket if you sewed around here. So, I would say maybe don't sew that piece. Yeah. All right. So, now we have this. And now we just hop over to our sewing machine. This is so easy. Um, and yes, I'm talking to you who, do, who, those of you who do not sew, I'm talking to you because 
I was a woman who did not sew, and I am no great seamstress, but I'm giving it a try with my uh, brother, um, Project Runway. I don't know, it's the one I bought. It was in Walmart, it was on sale, and it works fine. And I have since then seen many in uh, Goodwill for 20 bucks. So, and they, the guy at Goodwill said they test them, so you might want to have a dedicated paper one. This is my everything sewing machine, and it knows me, understands me and understands life will be a challenge with me. And we've had a talk. Yep, and everything is fine. Where's the string? Oh, it's like all sorts of mayhem. What on earth is that? See, this is what happens when you, when you, uh, okay, I, I probably have a little glue, a little of everything there. All right, so let's see, let me see. Put the foot down, let me get the string. Where's the string? Uh, Pam, get your glasses on, will you please get, okay, there's the bobbin. Take that out. Yeah, that looks a little dirty. Okay, what you can do, this this helps. If you have a baby wipe, and you have a little glue on your, turn your machine off so you don't actually accidentally sew your fingers. Probably the most important rule of sewing, if you ever remembered anything, if you're gonna get in here with your fingers, turn it off. <laughs> okay, that usually takes off the glue and stuff like that. I don't know, it maybe has a little bit of oil in it or something. Give it a good pull and turn it back on. I don't know why. Um, and now we're gonna thread this, babe. Come on, we're gonna show like we know what we're doing here. Okay. Okay, now it won't work. Okay, wow. okay. What's going on now? <laughs> I'll tell you, hey, it's so easy to use. And sometimes, this, uh, you could go that way. Okay, I gotta get my glasses. This is the blind bat trying to do this. Okay. All right, so it comes down and this little arm should come over here. And come on, come on, little arm. All right, hang on, let me fix this. Okay, that was so, oh, you can't really see there. Come here. That was so embarrassingly easy to fix, and I didn't catch it on camera. Okay, what I did, I didn't have the needle high enough. And that's, I didn't need to move the thingy at all. Okay, so here comes down. See, it goes right on. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Okay, so we're rethreading. Anybody, see, didn't I tell you to turn it off? I did, didn't I? See, turn it off before you stick your fingers in there. Okay, here we go. And it's on. And it, Automatic threader. So, oh, the best inventions and in slice bread. I know there's probably fancier ones, but all I need is to get the thread through there, and I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? Okay, I can turn my beast back on. All right. And now, I'm just going to sew up here, and then I'm going to sew over here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch, and I'm going to widen the space between the stitch. So my zigzag stitch is number four. Okay, make the stitches farther apart because we're doing with paper. We don't want to just perforate because if we get too many perforations close together. We fracture our paper. Okay, here we go. All right, yep, all that string's bunching up in there. I'm sure that's good. <laughs> and back we go. Okay, and we're off. And a little pair of scissors. All right, and then I'm just going to come down this side and do the same thing. That's just going to also reinforce this whole thing. Oh, did it come out? I knew it was going to do that. Didn't you know it? You could see it coming, couldn't you? Yeah. All right, let's turn it off. I'll show you what I did. That went down. This goes up. Now i got to find the string. I'm going to re-thread it. Okay, so just re-threading. This is life in the trenches. You know what I mean? This is it. You, sometimes you got to re-thread. Is that working right? Sometimes you got to re-thread. That doesn't feel right for some reason. Okay. And then I'm hooking that there, coming down here. Whoop, come on back over. Eh. Okay, get a good angle there. And then I'm hooking it on there. I have my machine off. I have it off. I'm not going to. And that, Do I have my needle at the highest point? Yes, highest point. All should go well. And we're in. Good, thank goodness. All right, there, we have re-strung. Yeah, make sure with this top needle, you have a long enough tail. And that was user error here, known as Pam goofed. Yeah, you want to have a nice long tail so that doesn't hop out of that little hole. Now, go find the, go find the bobbin string, Pam. I'm probably getting close to the end of that bobbin, but I think I have enough to finish it. There it is. Now, you want to pull that out to a, a, a respectable length. Get in there. All right, I got it. Tweezers help here, too. Okay. And we're back in action. It can happen that quickly. Okay, got that back on. And now I'm just going to sew down this side. My goodness. Okay, I'm holding the tails, and now I am... You, you don't have... Oh, I'm back up wrong. See, see, I turned my machine off. So I'm back to zigzag, and now I'm back to a wider stitch. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Okay, here we go. And we're running, and we're rolling, and we're rocking. 
And we're almost done. Maybe do it back up a little bit there. So the, um, the actual sewing part, minus all the uh, foibles of the uh, user error, they're, it's really quick. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, I'm going to bring it back over here. Don't get sick, don't get sick. Ignore the mess. There's a big mess. But there was fun. There was fun on this table. And I hope you can excuse that because it happens. All right, I'm sure you can understand. <laughs> Those of you who had messy desks. I'm not alone, am I? Okay, here we go. Got that. And I think it's cute already. I mean, maybe I don't even want to do anything, but, but I will. <laughs> you know. Um, now, I want to put something across here because it's plasticky tape. And I also want to reinforce the top uh, lip of this. So you can do that with a couple of things. You can do it with um, paper or fabric. Uh, probably other odd things, but this is the only thing I can think of. That's kind of cool. Um, but I'm going to use a fabric. And I'm going to use a trim just because I have a lot of it here and I thought it would be very nice. Uh, maybe that that one is a, a, I have some wide trim and this is a wide tape. So I am just going to pick a nice wide trim and cover that. Now you could also, I think would actually look really cool is torn bed sheet. I think that would look amazing on here because it, it goes with the rustic style. And um, I'm kind of blending the kind of leather and lace look. I've got this alligator sort of print, and then I've got some lace. So I'm, I'm doing that thing, whatever that thing is called in art. But if you want to stay with the same look, you could definitely do torn bed sheet, and you could dye it. You could, uh, that would be fun. Oh, yeah, I would like to do that. And um, t the torn edges, or you could just leave it stark white or stark uh, beige or something like that, or another color, whatever color you like. I'm going to glue that right on there. So just so it comes up to the lip and that, so the person is not fuddling with the edges of the lace when they're getting in and out of here, but they are enjoying the structure and the strength of the lace. That's it. That's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. I know. It's kind of pretty. And so we have this. Now I need to do that with the uh, top. Now you do have a choice. You don't have to go on the outside. Let's say you don't want to cover up that because you like the way the little frame looks. You could glue it to the inside if you wanted. And I think that might actually look better. Let me let me try that. But I don't know. Is it a good idea? Let's try it. I've never done it. Okay, we're going in. All right, I think it's about that long. Now i got to get the glue on the inside here. Here we go. Uh, I hope it's not too long. The only thing is the lace has holes in it, so some of the glue might come through the holes and glue this uh, pocket together. So you have, just have to be mindful not to glue your pocket together. Okay, so I just want to go, it's, it's a little bit is showing, not much, just a little bit. I hope it's not too wide. Did I, am I, can you see? Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. I think that's good. Let me, let me moosh it down and then pull it apart. That's what I'm going to do. Moosh and then pull. I seem to be, I have a curling issue here. So I will get in there with more glue to rectify the curling issue. Yeah, there we go, just mushy it down. All right, let's see what that looks like from the other side. Oh yeah, I kind of like that, that's nice. Okay, um, just a little bit of the uh, lace showing. So it's not like in your face lace, you know what I mean? It's just like a little dabble, do ya? Yeah. Nothing wrong with in your face lace. I think it's very nice. Yes, I hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's very pretty. And you could even put a little board or something or other there. Maybe we'll do that. Hold on. Okay. Um, I found a couple things. I found this, uh, what is this? Darning cotton. I have never darned in my life, but maybe I could put that there to give it a crisp little border, a crisp little border. I could do that. I could have just inked across there too, but I'm just going to try this. I'm just going to run a little tiny baby bit of glue. This is where the Sugar Bells icing piping bottle would have come in really handy. But do you think I have that loaded? No. No, a little lazy pants here. Couldn't uh, manage to do that. She's going to have to make that little project on today's list of things to do, Pam. Okay. Yeah, I, I find that even using this, even with the small pierce hole, which I showed on the last video, um, you still get a fairly large bead of glue, which can sometimes not be what is most desirable in all circumstances. Okay, we'll just do that. Okay. I don't seem to be glueless over here. Hang on. No, I got glue. Okay, get it down there, you know. Okay. Okay, now just give it the push. Hand hammer. My gosh, we're born with all these tools, you know? 
Okay, there we go. So if you want to see what that looks like better, well, I'll give you a better view. Bird's eye. Yep, that's my alarm. I think you can hear it now. Okay, so that's what that looks like across there. I don't know, just a little finishing edge. Nothing fancy, just a little, you know, something. And uh, turn that in a little tail, a little tail. I've got stuff stuck in my fingers. Okay, so we have that. And then we could just decorate it up. And the other day I was making some dangle tags. If you happen to catch that video, that was fun. And I had some little leftover pieces. Um, and I'm trying to use up what's on my desk. So I thought I would just use, I think they pop nicely against there. Let me back you up a little bit, sorry. Okay. Uh, maybe just put some of these little tags in. That's kind of cute, isn't it? Yeah, let's do that. So these were inked and stamped and this was um, end pages or fly leaf pages from a book. And I love that paper. It's just so, I don't know. I, it's a weird, it's a weird paper thing, but I just love those end pages. They're so pretty and they're beautiful paper. Um, new books, old books, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, what about you on an angle. Okay, now we were going to, we don't have to reinforce this, but we could, and I have an idea. Somebody gave me something that's really cool. Let me, do I want to put a word on here? Maybe. All right, let's get a word. Get a word, get a word. Okay. Um, oh, this is neat. Yeah. Will it fit? Probably not. We'll just take what we can get. I got the word classified. Love this stamp. eBay, uh, Etsy, somewhere. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. One of those random late night ha happy trigger finger purchases. Oh boy. <sighs> okay, did I get it? Yeah, I got that. Yay! <laughs> but if you look up a classified stamp on those at those locations, I'm sure you will come up with one. Um, they're kind of cool. Kind of cool. Alrighty. Alrighty. There we go. Alright. Oh, that's the same angle. Oh well, too late. Uh, it's, this angle and that angle, they're a little different, but it's kind of nice to have them float around. And uh, maybe, I don't know why, but I feel like it's calling for a postage stamp. And uh, I'm going to get a postage stamp. Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at that. All right, I'll bring you what I found. And sometimes you got to go in and come out of your postage stamp bucket. Don't go, don't stay there too long or you'll never come out. You know what I mean? There's this guy and he's like a big stamper thing with a two postage stamps. That's kind of cool. <gasps> That's really nice. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Should I ink it? Oh, it's all natural old. I'll just do a little, just a little, Pam. Okay. So, I mean, decorating is is just whatever you would like to do with it. And that's kind of the fun part, you know? It's like, there we go. That's kind of cool. That's the same angle, Pam. Have you noticed that? In the middle. No, it's about, uh, uh, could do that. Maybe in the middle, maybe in the middle. Oh, see, I always want to rotate it that way. Must be something with my my brain. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's got a two-parter. Oh, I can save that for something else. That's really cool. Maybe we'll put that on the back. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. More to play with. More junk from old days to play with. Blended with new junk from today to play with. How fun is that, right? I mean, quietly and secretly in our own little crafty spaces. Who knew we had so much uh, in common? You know, I'm just well, honestly... Flabbergast. Oh, I got glue all over the place. Yep, there's. Now, if you're quick and deft, you can roll it off with those little paws. See how it rolls off? I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it kind of just rolls off. Get in there. Got to get in there quickly, though, before it dries. Or once it dries, it's in there forever. Of course, if you have um, ink on your fingers, everything looks inky. Okay, a little bit there. Okay. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Ah, so we have this nice pocket here, and we have this nice big pocket here, and then, and then, oh, no, no, back over here. I was going to try one thing. Somebody gifted me this, and I thought this, the colors would look so pretty on here. Isn't this pretty? This is so pretty. I don't know if you personally attached every one of those, or if you just got it like this, but whatever. I just love this, and I think that would look really pretty there. Can I please show the whole thing? Can, can you please, like, at least have us be able to see what you're doing, Pam. That would be nice. Okay. I like that. I think that's really pretty. Okay, we're going to do that. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, now we're just in glue heaven, right? Because I'm just gluing at this point. There's no sewing. And if you didn't want to sew these edges, you could just glue these pieces right here. And when you fold it up and just press it down and walk away and call it a day. And, uh, yeah, this is really pretty. All right, so let's do that. This is, this is, Fabrifix is great for this kind of crafting because it's very strong. 
uh, it's technically a fabric glue. It's a clear silicone glue. I'm not sponsored. I just like the darn stuff, okay? And um, um, there we go. Okay. So, because I, I say that all the time because everybody asks me about it. What glue are you using? What glue are you using? So I try and answer it before you ask. That's why I tell you about a million times. Um, and so far, it has been really, really good. And personally, I find Fabri Fabrifix, Fabri-Tac, and Beacon 3-in-1 glue, they all work the same for me. And I believe they're all made by Beacon. So there's probably subtle differences, but, you know, there. I think that's just so pretty. Okay, and it's got sound. You know what I mean? It's like, it's got, it's got like gypsy sound. Oh, I should put some of the gypsy kit in here. That would be fun. Now, wouldn't that be fun with a gypsy um, uh, journal to have something like that? That's cool. Okay, so let's look at the back. And, and you might not want to do anything with the back, but I have a few of these pieces and I thought, well, let's just go ahead and put these on here because they're here. I'm here. You're here. And this is like, you know, we're just friends with paper, having fun. And uh, who knew? Who knew? We were all out here doing a lot of the similar things. I've been uh, asking a bunch of people lately if they knew what junk journals were. Not, not um, on the channel, but... Uh, out in the world? Nope. Still, 99% of the world has no idea what we're talking about. That's right. Not nothing. Not a zip. Um, so there, uh, my my mission is not complete till I get everybody to make a book at least once in your life. That's right. And this is your legacy. Remember, this will probably be here long after you are. And um, so, have it tell a little story. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, I think this is so pretty. And that was so fun and so simple. So you can come along and tuck anything you like in here. Maybe you have some interesting book pages you want to load in the big pocket. What else you got? I don't know. Maybe you want to put a bunch of um, digi kits in the small pocket. You can do that. Yeah, you can totally do that. And like I said, you could use this as gi for gifting or could you, you could use this for self-storage if you want to have a place to tuck your pretties until you use them. And I do encourage you to use your pretties because um, I know and sometimes they have to have a special event. Yeah, I understand. I totally understand that because I am famous for hanging on to them and I really have to have the talk with myself. You know what I mean? The talk and uh, to use them. And then I, I, I find like, oh, yeah, that would look so cool there. And then let it go to the universe. You know, just let it go and let somebody else enjoy it and uh, have some fun. So here's um, the two. And I think I have everything that you can see, right? I can clear my desk a little bit. And I was thinking with these little paper beads we made the other day, these were so cute and so fun. You could string them um, maybe on... Um, uh, like a little, you know, this kind of string, you know, that string, multicolored string and tie little knots in between. And you could, if you don't have this, maybe you could string that along there or have them dangle off or clip, put these on a little clip and have the clip here. And then somebody could have a little clip with cute little dangles on it, little beads. Um, I don't know, just so many places to go with this, but I hope you had fun and I uh, hope this inspires you. The next time you see one of those big envelopes coming through, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to make good use of that sunshine. Do you have anything to say? Yes, I have a very important announcement. Okay, what is it? Okay, here, I'm coming. Hang on, everybody. Coming over. All right, here I am. I'm rotating and I'm coming in. Here I am. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, my God, my big news today. Um, Mom is taking me to a very special doggy event today. Yes, there were, it's, it's not the doggy park. You want to go to the park, Sunny? Park? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a, like a gathering of people and their dogs. Okay, it looks a lot like the doggy park, but it's, yeah, there's my tongue, and there we go. And it's a different place, and Mommy's never took me there before. No, so this is new, and I'm very excited. I'm going to meet new puppies, and I'm sure they're going to mostly be bigger than me, but I'm not going to let that, in. look it, I'm so relaxed. I am calm as ever. I'm not going to let that freak me out. No, no, no. Um, we're going to do our deep breathing before we go. Yes, we are. And then um, there might be snacks involved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you say something I recognize? Are you a little tired, son? You slept all night. You slept all night. I know, but I, I, I need extra naps. I don't know how to explain it. I just do. And um, so you're very excited about our, our dog event today? Yes, I will. Oh, 
I gotta go back to sleep, Mom. Can you just put me back in the bed? Okay, well, um, so we'll tell them more stories about what happened at the doggy. Ah, it's my big mouth. <laughs> Doesn't it, it rains terror in the in the streets when they see how big my giant jaws are? Wait till I show them my teeth, boy. Uh, well, I think you're a pretty friendly guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You can't even see any teeth. Look, where's the teeth? I haven't got any teeth. You've got teeth. Okay, just a few. All right, good. All right. So, back to bed? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Love y'all. Bye. Okay. Thank you, Sunbun. All right. So, we will give a full update of the doggy adventure um, as that happens. And... Um, if you don't know, and if you are new, welcome. I have a free monthly emailed newsletter where you can get free digital images emailed to you every month automatically. All you do is sign up in the link in the description box down below. You'll get um, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. I love to tuck that in the beginning of my junk journal to help people understand what on earth they just received. Um, and also junk journal tips, updates from me, peeks at my do digis, and more fun stuff that comes in there. And... Uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcast, the audio new material, comes out Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if you have Spotify, you can watch the um, uh, all sorts of different video podcasts on every other day of the week. Always uh, Something new is always uploaded. And I have an Etsy shop. So if you are looking for completed journals and... Um, I'm working on journals right now, but um, if I have some that are done and... Uh, I also make bundles. Sometimes you're going to find those in my Etsy shop for sale. Sometimes I do a big fanfare video. Sometimes I just sneak them in there. And uh, whoever comes by, um, you might find something. So um, if there is something in there, there will be a journal section. If there's no journal section, that means that all, everything that I had for sale at that point was bought. But what I always have for sale in there are digikits. So if you like... Um, uh, digital images that you can get on a full page. Like I have, um, show them an example, Pam. Okay, I have like a thousand of them over here. Okay, what's this? Okay, oh no, I, I started cutting it up. Could you have one page, one digi kit in the house that you could show anybody? Okay, I have one here. Here's one. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, this is what a digi kit looks like. It's a, a page that you print out at home on your printer. It has, is they're themed. So this one is Halloween. I think this is Halloween 2022, I believe. Um, and you can, uh, there's over 170 themes to pick from. Birds, Victorian, dragonfly, butterflies, you name it. All sorts of them. And um, there's five pages in each and they're JPEG. And... Uh, uh, I, I put on the highest resolution that the picture comes in. And uh, this is a signature page. If you, That's the only different kind that I have there where these are lighter, softer pages. So if you want to use these to print out on regular um, copy paper and use these as your journal pages, they're already uh, decorated backgrounds for you. And I print them out on both sides, okay, um, to put something on either side. But you don't have to. You can print them out on one side and just decorate the other side as well. And uh, what else? Um... If you don't want to print, but you would like to have uh, digi kits, I have a print and mail option for you. Um, for one flat fee, which includes free priority shipping, um, you will get 10 digi kits printed out on lightweight cardstock paper. So the paper is, if I can show you, it's 110 pound weight. It's this thick. Okay, if you can kind of see that. And um, uh, all I need are the names of the 10 digi kits. Just email me that list of 10 names. I only need the first two or three words to identify it. And... Um, uh, of the name, or you can send the list through Etsy message and uh, just say, Pam, here's my list, and I purchased the print and mail. You don't need to print, uh, purchase all the different um, digi kits, uh, just uh, the one print and mail option will cover you for everything. And I have fundals, which are collections of old and interesting papers. So if you like old papers and those, uh, the real ones, and um, uh, it's a mix of old and interesting papers. So things that would be fun to um, maybe add to a junk journal. Maybe if you're a historian or collector and you never had the opportunity, or you're just somebody who's never had the opportunity to touch a really old paper, but you'd see, like to see what that is like. I put in there um, antique ledger, old checks, receipts, postcards, um, di uh, dictionary pages, music papers, and a whole plethora of other things, um, uh, some hand-dyed paper, and uh, um, there are 100 plus pieces in each fundal pack. So there you go. And that's one. And that price also includes free priority shipping. And also I have an 
Amazon shop. Hey, um, an Amazon shop is, uh, I'm an affiliate for Amazon. So that means if you purchase through my Amazon store, um, that will help my shop out a little bit, but you don't pay more for these items. That's how that works. And um, I have a merchandise shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, then um, I got you covered. You can put that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a mug, a tote, a water bottle, and they're great for gift giving or for yourself. And, I'll, and thank you for everybody who's purchased the merchandise. That really does help as well. Um, keeps kibble on the table. <laughs> Um, not mandatory, but it is there if you would like to. And also, um, you can find me on social media, on Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. Having lots of fun doing weekly and monthly challenges over there. Or you're welcome to lurk. And it's a very inspirational place to come. So come on and show us what you're making from these videos or do the challenges. You're welcome to do old challenges, new challenges. It's all good. We have a lot of fun over there. And um, remember most of all that fun can be simple. And create with reckless abandon, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.